Please explain 1 John 4, 18. Those are my favorite questions. Go into the Bible and let's study what a particular verse has to say. So let's start. Let's turn to 1 John 4, verse 18. And as we read this text, we're going to read it in parts. When I'm studying a verse, usually what I like to do is take that verse and I write that verse by hand. And I write it piece by piece by piece. And the reason that I do that is because it keeps me focused on the thing that I'm listening to as far as the biblical text is concerned. And I don't get ahead of myself. I'm able to focus on just a few words at a time. So that's what we're going to do as we read this text. Here's what John writes. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. Now notice this next statement. Because fear hath torment. He then ends with these words. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now, if you look at that verse, he is contrasting two concepts. Love and fear. And he says this, where there is perfect love, there's no fear. But where there is fear, then there is no perfect Love. Now some might ask the question, well, what in the world is he really talking about? What is he addressing? And if we go back to verse 17, we see that John is applying this to the judgment. Notice what he says. Herein is love made perfect, that ye may have boldness when... In the day of judgment. Now notice how he concludes this one. Because as he is, so are we in the world. My friends, when you and I stand in the judgment, we will either stand before God having perfect love and no fear, or else we will stand before God without perfect love and trembling in fear. Thus, we need to understand what perfect love is, don't we? When you look up that little word perfect, Strong says that it means complete. Thayer says that it means wanting nothing necessary to complete. Perfect love is whole love. Perfect love is entire love. It is full grown love, mature love, complete love. It is a love that lacks absolutely nothing whatsoever. We might begin discussing perfect love by noting what perfect love is not. Number one, perfect love is not a feeling of warmth in our bosom for Jesus. Isn't that the way many individuals might define perfect love? And we could go to almost anyone in the entirety of the United States and ask them, do you love Jesus? And guess what they would say? Oh yes, I love Jesus. Especially those individuals who refer to themselves as Christians. They would all say, yes, oh yes. And they just hold their chest. Oh, I love Him so much in my heart. Well, it's just because you have a warmth for Jesus. An emotion for Jesus doesn't mean that you have perfect love. Secondly, 
Perfect love does not involve my own personal assessment of myself. You see, every one of us would like to think that we love Jesus perfectly, don't we? That our love is full grown, that our love is mature, that our love is as it ought to be. And in our minds, we convince ourselves of that, don't we? I know that I love Jesus perfectly. But you see, perfect love has absolutely nothing to do with my own personal assessment of myself. And fortunately, notice this one, perfect love does not involve absolute perfection as far as my living a Christian life. That's an impossibility. He that saith he hath no sin is a liar, and the truth is not in him. John writes in 1 John 1, 8 and also verse 10. We're going to mess up. We're going to have sin in our lives. There's going to be times when we're going to have to repent and confess those transgressions. And that is not a part of perfect love. So someone might ask, well, if none of those things are perfect love, then what is perfect love? And as you study John's epistle, you'll find there are two main elements of perfect love. The first one is this, dwelling in God. Dwelling in God. John writes in verse 16, God is love. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Listen to me, folks. Where you and I dwell is of vital importance. And there are only two places where we can dwell. You can dwell in the world. It is evil. It is vile. It is wicked. It is ungodly. It is a realm of darkness. And it is controlled by Satan. Or... You can dwell in another realm. John here describes it as love, doesn't he? God is love. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. That other realm is a realm of light. It is a realm of holiness. It is a realm of Purity. It is a realm wherein Jesus Christ is the overseer. He is the Lord of that realm. And my friends, very simply, that realm is the precious church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That realm is the realm known as the realm of the called out ones. You see, that realm involves all those individuals who have been called out of the world. We're not like those individuals. We're dwelling in God. We are God's people. We've been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And that is one element of our having perfect love. Because we're in that realm. But John says there's a, another element as well to this idea of perfect love. And it's this. Doing God's will. 1 John 5, 3, for this is the love of God that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not grievous. You see, it, there is a matter of obedience to the Almighty, isn't there? You and I just can't get in Jesus and then think I can live however I want to live. And I see a lot of Christians doing exactly that. I'm in Christ, I'm free, I'm saved and I can just live however I want to live. No, you can't. Perfect love involves what? Obeying the commands of God. To perfection, no. But my friends, doing everything I possibly can do to live as God wants me to live. Now notice, when you and I are in God... And when you and I are striving every day to live our lives in obedience to the commands of God, John says this, we are as He is in this world. Isn't that amazing? 
when God looks at me, He doesn't see a vile, ugly sinner. When God looks at me, if I'm in Christ, if I'm doing His will, God looks at me as a saint. He looks at me as one of the holy ones. He looks at me as a follower of Jesus Christ. I am as He is in the world. What a blessing. And my friend, if you are that way, you have absolutely nothing to fear when it comes to the judgment. When you and I stand before God in judgment with perfect love, then we are well pleasing in the sight of God. When you and I stand there in perfect love, then you and I are going to find our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. When we stand before God in perfect love, then guess what? We're going to hear the words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Let me ask you something. Did Paul fear the judgment? Absolutely not. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I've finished the course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day. Folks, there's no fear in Paul's words, is there? He's bold. He's confident. He's courageous. You want to know why? It's because he possessed perfect love. And perfect love does what? Casteth out fear. But here's the point. The opposite is true. The opposite is true. Isn't that what John said? He that feareth is not made perfect in love. My friends, if you sit here and think about the judgment and you tremble and quake and dread having to go to that day and stand before God, then you've got some problems. Either you are not in Christ Jesus, you are not in the love of God, you are not in God, or else you are not keeping His commandments. So the question we need to ask ourselves is this, do you fear the judgment? Do you fear the judgment? You see, if you can stand up boldly and say, I don't fear judgment. I long for the judgment. I know who I am. I know that I possess perfect love. I can't wait to stand before Him and hear those, war those words of reward. Isn't that a wonderful thought? If you think about that judgment and you tremble and you quake and you dread it, folks, it's time to take a look at your spiritual life. And it's time to make some adjustments and do what you need to do to step into that realm of perfect love.